Hello everyone, welcome back to Galactic Boy. It's time for my breakdown of the fifth episode of Andor, Tower of the Axe Forgets, directed by Susanna White and written by Dan Gilroy. I'll be going over the episode scene by scene, pointing out all the details you may have missed. And without any further ado, let's get into it. As usual, let's start off with the opening title theme, and this one is different yet again, with this slight pinging of a piano, I believe, being heard in the background. Onto the actual episode, we see Cyril Khan sitting in his room on Coruscant. He looks up out the window to see the sun for a brief second before it disappears behind the buildings. Cyril and his mother live on the Coruscant underworld. If you don't know, Coruscant has multiple layers of city going down below the surface, known as the underground. Cyril living here makes it so that this glimpse of light is probably the only sunlight he'll be seeing all day due to how far underground he is and all the buildings up top. And we actually see a tear in his eye. Most likely him reflecting on how far down he's fallen. We then see him sitting down having breakfast with his mother. We can see a coffee machine, some milleroon mil fruit on the fruit platter, and a cleaning droid vacuum thing. Sue is also seen eating blue chocolate cereal with blue milk. They talk about calling an old friend to help Sue, and we go to Cassian, resting, then waking up to find stuff missing. He looks for it and finds Skeen going through it to make sure Cassian isn't up to anything. We can see Cassian's Briar pistol. We can also see as one of the more, one of the Primor's guns, most likely Cyril's. We also see Skeen has a few tattoos. The first one on his chest is Crate Head. This has been revealed to be the name of a prison, and Skeen's tattoo is his prisoner tattoo. And the other tattoo on his arm means by the hand. I have no idea what this is, but it could be another prison tattoo, or maybe he was part of some sort of gang, and this is a tattoo from it. Skeen then asks some questions about Cassian, to which he makes up a fake story of him being a youth sentinel on Sipo for three years, since the age of 13. Sipo is a new planet in the universe. We then go to Mom Mothma's house, and she talks to her daughter about something. It's not really clear what it is. Then back in Aldani, we see Nemec talking to Cassian. He hands him a cup of dray milk, which is milk from the goats native to Aldani. This milk is white, you know, the normal colour of milk. So we got blue milk green milk and now this white milk. We look at an old navigational system, which Nemec seems very fond of due to its reliability and the fact it isn't imperial. We also see who Nemec really is through this conversation he has with Cassian. He wants to stop oppression. We also find he's writing a manifesto. Cassian then goes into a meeting with Vel and Taraban. They're asking questions about how to get the Rono freighter off the track, how to calibrate the weight and everything else, making it evident they have no idea what they're talking about. Cassian then takes some form of control by changing the plan slightly, making himself the pilot of the freighter, instead of just being the one to help them fly it out. We then go to the Imperial base on Eldani and follow Gorn. He checks out the sacred Eldani building and gets mad at his troops for using it as target practice and desecrating it. We then see Taraman giving Cassian his cover story. He's the Imperial pilot transferred from the Alkenzi Air Base. The Alkenzi Air Base is an airbase on Eldani. We actually see this airbase in episode 6. We then go to Ferex and we see a bunch of Imperials going around clearing up the place and cleaning up, or more accurately making the citizens clean up. We also see the Imperials kicking everyone out of the hotel so they can use it for themselves. We go back to the rebel camp, and Talma is making sure all the others know how to walk and act like Imperials. And Cassian says Skeen and Taraman should switch, as Skeen is left-handed, rather than ask why, and Cassian replies saying your weapon should be on the outside of you, not inside. Bell questions him, asking what everyone else is. Her, Taraman, and Sinta are right-handed, and Nemec shoots left but favours right, showing just how much Cassian's been analysing his teammates. Then we get this really tense scene where they hear an Imperial TIE fighter's roar in the distance and scramble to hide the guns so they aren't caught. Then the TIE leaves, and just as things seem clear, it comes up from the mountains, swoops down incredibly low, flying right beside them. The TIE's mechanical screech being incredibly loud. We then go to the Imperial ISB HQ, and we see Dedra Mira and her assistant going over a bunch of case files, all seemingly connecting to a coordinated rebellion. We then go to Coruscant with Cyril, and they're talking about Uncle Harlow, who will help Cyril back on old help Cyril get back to his former glory. Well, as close as he can get, and get a job. Back in Aldani, we see them all preparing for the attack on the base, and Cassian asks about why Lieutenant Gordon is getting involved in this, to which we finally fell in love to an Eldani woman, and then the Empire killed her. Then we go to the Imperial base, and we see where the credits and the freighter are being stored in the hangar. And Gorn talks to his men, to which we find out that Gorn should send troops up to see the Eye, 
to boost morale, to which Gorn allows the men to skip work to see the eye. This is a very smart move on Gorn's part as it means less Imperials to get in the way. Back at the rebel camp, Skeen pulls a knife on Cassian's throat and finds the Sky Kyber necklace Luthen gave of Cassian. Tension begins rising and then Cassian reveals that he's only in this for the money. Then an Imperial Lambda class shuttle flies by. We then go to Coruscant and Moffat is talking to Perrin about charity and stuff. Now Perrin isn't a caring guy. Back in Aldani, the rebels look at the Imperial base. Gorn checks the time on his watch, which is actually the first time we've ever seen a watch in Star Wars. We find out Skeen's backstory. The whole reason he's in this is because his brother was a farmer. The Empire came in, flooded his land and destroyed everything. His brother couldn't bear the fact he let the Empire do this and drowned himself. Then we go to Luthen's shop and see him checking the radio constantly to make sure everything's going right. Because he's paranoid that something will go wrong. We can also see in the background what some these stones, which looks very similar to the Samkara stones from Indiana Jones. Luthen, after being advised by his player, turns off the radio and calls it a day.